And the Lord said, I'm just going to uh, give you this penny on it. The Lord said through this prophet that I know, I know this person, and have uh, reason to believe that their prophecy is valid. But the Lord said, and when you see one and two vacancies on, on your Supreme Court, Know that I am the Supreme Justice. Ooh, wow. And the third, so the prophecy prophesied that there would be three vacancies on the Supreme Court. And it said, and the third will be a woman of compassion. So it was it was prophesied. Yeah. Now, would you like it, dislike it, agree with it, or do, I'm just telling you. That this was prophesied by by somebody that uh, she she would be a woman of compassion. Now I'm, I don't know. I do know this. I do know that she is the eldest of seven children, and she has seven children, wow. and she serves on the seventh district circuit court. Wow. Of seven, 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 seven. Seven. There's three sevens right there. Third dimension. <laughs> <laughs> and I do know that she was was put on the hot seat, so to speak, for for her nomination on the heels of the seventh storm of this season, this hurricane season. Sally was the seventh <coughs> storm uh, hurricane. So that's four sevens. So I'm I'm thinking seven is the number of completion. Yeah finality and fulfillment like that. And I just think that's interesting, or at least it is to me. Uh, also, I noticed that in the news, of course, you don't, you're not seeing much about it in the news, but if you know it, you can research it. There is a, a Middle East a, a, a agreement right now. And do you know what it's called? What they're calling the Middle East Peace Agreement that between Israel and the United Arab Emirates? Yeah. You oh, know the, what Abraham, the Abraham Agreement. The Abraham Accords. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that sounds good. That's mm -hmm. what it's called. And, and it, it occurs to me that these people are coming together on their similarities and not their differences. Because all of these Arabs and Jews claim Abraham as their father. And he is their yes. father. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the scripture over in, uh, in Genesis. Let me, let me just read the scripture. In Genesis chapter 25, verse, um, let's see, Genesis 25. Did it say why it was called the Abraham Accord? I guess that's what they named it. No, I'm going to say why. I mean. Oh, I guess it's because of what I said. They all consider themselves to be descendants of Abraham, and they're coming together in uh, an agreement for peace. So it is aptly named the Abraham Accord. Um, in Genesis 25, verse 7, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, and hundred, threescore, and fifteen years. That's 175 years. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Now listen, to here it is. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. That's also where Sarah was born. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to see that although Ishmael had been separated from his father, 
Abraham for years that he came back and united with his half-brother Isaac and they worked together and buried their father. And I'm thinking that's sort of what's happening right now. Currently, those Arabs and those Jews have come together in the name of their father Abraham to have peace. Uh, there's a there's a message in there somewhere. Yes, sir. It would seem like this peace may be that peace that the Bible speaks about in Revelation is when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. It could be. It could be. But I would uh, I would like to think that it's not. Who wants sudden destruction? But anyway, it could be. I'm not going to argue uh, that it could be. Uh, the word judge, when I was talking about the, uh, the judge a few minutes ago, the word judge in the Hebrew language is shephat, which means to interpret the rule of law and execute judge, justice. To interpret the rule of law and execute justice. And that's really what uh, the, the judicial branch of the government is supposed to do. Interpret the rule of law and execute justice or render a just verdict. Now, I want to take you in the scriptures to what the Lord has put in my heart. And I've only got just a brief, brief time. But in Judges chapter 21, verse 25, the word of God says this. And there was no king in Israel every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now that's chaos. Uh -huh. That's Judges what? Judges chapter 21 verse 25. There was no king in Israel and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. These were the days of the judges. And that's watching that this week put me in mind and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said there's a whole book that's dedicated to judges. And I said, yes, sir. There sure is. And I read the, yesterday morning, I read the entire book of Judges and the first half of 1 Samuel. Just read it before I even got out of bed. I was in the bed reading it yesterday morning. And uh, I want to I say to you that the days of the judges where we're right after we're right after Joshua. You know, they had they had Moses to lead Israel and then uh, at, when Moses uh, was gone, they had Joshua and Joshua died at the age of 110. That means that Joshua was leading Israel into the Canaan land for about 30 years after uh, uh a, uh, Moses had died, so they had uh, a leader in Joshua, and they all responded, and the elders, he worked with the elders in, in, in Israel, and they divided up the land, and they were taking possession of the land, but the land was filled with inhabitants, and Abraham, or rather, Moses made them swear, because God made him swear, that they would not make any league or any agreement with the heathens of that land that they would drive them out. But after Joshua died, the Jews, rather than to fight and expel those people, began to seek peace with them and made leagues and agreements and like that. And that is where... <clears throat> the rift came from over the next 320 years of the time of the judges. 320 years, there was various judges. There was about, I wrote them down here. Uh, I've got so many papers up here, I'm doing too many things today. Oh, here we go. The first judge was Othniel. 
Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Gideon, Abimelech, Tola, Yar, 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 uh, Jephthah, uh, Abzan, Elon, Abdon, Samson, Eli, and actually the last judge was Samuel, who was a prophet. But there was no king. And you remember, the way Israel got their first king was they kept coming to Samuel, who was the prophet of the day, and they said, we want a king like the other countries. Well, they wouldn't have said that if they hadn't been other countries still in the Canaan land that they were observing and seeing and like that. So they wanted a civil leader instead of a spiritual leader. And, and, and God said to Samuel, because Samuel was upset about it, and God said, Samuel, it's not anything you've done. And they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. He said, so I'm going to give them what they want, but they're going to regret it. Wow. So the first king that Samuel anointed was Saul, King Saul. Saul was said to be head and shoulders above the other Jews. Evidently, he was a, a big man of big stature. So, uh, and then Samuel sort of adopted Saul and really took responsibility for Saul and, and tried to walk him through and babysit with him through the situations uh, that, he, that he navigated as king. Well, Saul, as you know, started out good, but it didn't take him long to mess up and become arrogant. And after a while, God said to Samuel... Uh, how long are you going to grieve and mourn for Saul? Go and fill up your horn with oil and go to Jesse's house because I have chosen me another king. Now when the Bible says God sets up kings and takes down kings, it means that. If God wants it, you can't stop it. Amen. That's right. In the long run, Stop it. Now here's the thing. Uh, he said, Lord, if I go over there, Saul will find out I went and he'll kill me. He said, no, you just take a sacrifice and tell the people you're coming to make a sacrifice because you will. But while you're there, anoint the next king. Well, you know the story how that Jesse had uh, several sons and he kept running them out thinking that that was the one, that was the one, that was the one. And finally he got to the last one, which was David, who was only 17 years old. And God said, this is him. This is the one. God doesn't pick who you want to pick. That's God right. doesn't pick who you think is the one. That's right. God picks who he picks. Anyway, so uh, uh, Samuel anointed him at the age of 17, but it was 13 years before he ever ended up on the throne. But he was anointed, and he went out one day when the army of Israel and the army of the Philistines were in battle and David's older brothers were in that army and they were a part of that battle and this Goliath kept coming out and challenging Any, anybody who will come fight with me if you beat me we'll serve you the Philistines will serve you if I beat you you, you will serve us well nobody wanted to go Saul was the biggest one there and he didn't want to go <laughs> and uh, none of David's brothers wanted to go, so David went out. Jesse, his father, sent him to take them food. And he showed up, and uh, he saw what was happening, and he, he, he was appalled by it. He said, why is he allowed to do that? He's, he's cursing God. That's right. And his brothers said to him, you shut up. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what you're talking about. You just came out here to see what you could see. Yeah. It's none of your business. You go, you go home. He said, why won't somebody fight him? He said, I'll fight him. <laughs> yep. Now we know why God chose him. That's right. There was something inside of him. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Saul said, okay, I'll let you go fight him. Now that's a, that's a poor kind of a king right there <laughs> who is big and is going to let a teenager go fight his battle for him. That was Saul's giant. That was his problem. So he let David go side of the front. Anyway, he said, you wear my armor. Well, his armor is way too big for David. David said, 
it don't fit, I can't wear it, let me use what I use. And so he did, he took the stones and the sling and went out and slew the giant. Well, everybody was elated that he did that, and uh, Saul gave him his daughter, Michael, for uh, a wife as a reward for killing the giant. Anyway, the fact was that the first king of Israel, they regretted having him as king before too long. They would have done better with Samuel and, and, and staying with their spiritual leader. But uh, then it began a process uh, before that of 320 years of judges. And they would rule for a while, and then they'd fall away, or something would happen, and then God would raise up somebody else. But they were called the judges of Israel, who were the ones who, who uh, calmed the people and fought the battles and gave a plan or a course or a track to run on. So that was the time of the Judges. Now, I want to read to you a scripture out of the book of Judges. So if you'll turn to the book of Judges, chapter 9. I'm going to read this real quick, and I'm going to say a couple of things about it, and then I'm going to be done. Judges 9, there was uh, one of the fellows named Abimelech who decided that he would come up with an idea of how to be the next judge of Israel. And he bribed some people, and he threatened and intimidated some people, and uh, he, he made some agreements and some leagues under the table dealings, and got support, and they made him their leader. But then a man who saw the reality of it and understood what was going on stood up and gave a parable. It's called the parable of the bramble bush. Now listen, verse 8 of Judges. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? Then all the trees said unto the bramble bush, or the bramble tree, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, if in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The parable that this man gave was that all the trees went to the various beautiful, fruitful, and useful trees and ask for that tree to be their king or ruler. And none of them wanted to do it, so they ended up with the bramble bush. Now the bramble bush is a thorn bush. And back in these times, thorns were used to, to uh, burn a hot fire, to start a hot fire. And thorns would crackle and pop as, as they burned in the fire. And so the bramble bush, and by the way, let me, let, me, let me remind you that there was no bramble bush and no thorn bush before man sinned. That came with sin. Adam didn't know anything about thorns and brambles until he sinned. 
Okay? Now, so, he said, he said, okay, if you want me to be your ruler, then you come under my shadow. In other words, you come under my influence, my jurisdiction, my headship, and if you don't do that, then I'll send a fire to destroy you. I'll burn up all the cedars of Lebanon because I can start a big fire. Now, this parable was given by a man when he saw how a leader came into power. Now, that reminded me that we are in a time of choosing leaders. Not just one, many. Because it is election time. And I, I, I thought to myself, do we, really, do we really realize the importance of inviting God to be a part of this scenario? Because if you just do what you think, and I just do what I think, and this other guy does what he thinks, and those people over there do what they think, and out of our divisiveness, or our divisions, or out of our disagreements, or out of our pet peeves, or out of our uh, particular likes or dislikes, we choose somebody, will it be God's choice? And Quite humbly and frankly, I want to suggest to you that I believe we're at a time in history where we need it to be God's choice. Amen. Not just our choice. We need for our choice. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane did a key thing. He told God what his will was. If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. In other words, that's what I want. I want this cup to pass from me. But then he said something key that Adam did not do. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And that's what made Jesus the successful replacement of, of Adam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He surrendered and submitted his will to God. We like what we like. We don't like what we don't like. And, and and, and like that, and, 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 and that's normal. That's human. Somebody might choose the color of red, and another might choose the color of yellow or blue or whatever. There's no sin in that. It's just you like this, but I like this. That's, you know, the, the human nature. We like what we like. But I believe we're coming to a place where we really need to ask God to anoint things so that what we do is what he inspires us to do. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do it that way, I believe we're going to be in a heap of trouble. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. These people in Judges went through 320 years of chaotic, bad times. And it's because they were just letting everything pop up that wanted to pop up to lead them. But I believe that we need God to lead us. That's right. I think they made a mistake when they wanted a king instead of a prophet. Because I think this country needs some spiritual leadership as well as Amen. civil leadership. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I think we should make it a matter of prayer. Don't let desperation and confusion be your ruling factor when you make decisions Amen. like this. Saul, then David, then Solomon, kings. After Solomon, you don't even know, know who the next king was, hardly. It was one of Solomon's sons. And then Israel got divided, and then this one, that one. You end up uh, down, down the line with an old boy named Ahab. And his wife was named Jezebel. And she sort of ruled, she was the power behind the throne, if you will. And her spirit was one of killing the prophets. She killed all the prophets she could kill. 
That's when Elijah showed back up after hiding because she wanted to kill him too. He showed back up and he called all her prophets to Mount Carmel and called the fire down and then he killed her prophets. Well, that made her even worse mad and she said, well, I'm going to kill Then he runs again and ends up in the cave. And I, I don't want to go through all that, but, but what I'm saying is there was a, a spirit behind the throne, the leadership of that nation that wanted to kill the prophets. That was not a good thing, y'all. Um, then you, you keep going, you keep going, you get kings and kings and kings and kings. And then you come to Esther. This is a different, uh, different than, than, than Jezebel. The spirit of Esther behind the throne was a salvation instead of a killing. It was a it was a, a, a saving grace instead of, uh, of a killing spirit. And I believe that, can I just tell you what I think? Mm -hmm. I sense in my spirit that we are coming to a time where those two spirits are at war. A Jezebel spirit and an Esther spirit. And I believe that a lot of things hang in the balances. And I believe we need to be very prayerful Amen. in what we do. Yes. And uh, if you can't take it to God, don't do it. Amen. That's right. Amen? Amen. If you can't take it to God, then it ain't worth doing. Take it to God. And be convinced in your heart that what God says is what you agree with. And then walk it out. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'll tell you something that's amusing. Esther was in a kingdom of Persia and Media. The Medes and the Persians. Media and Persia. Those were the powers of the kingdom that she was in that she influenced Media and Persia. That was the name of the country, Media. The Medes and the Persians took over from the Babylonians. But it's interesting that a big factor in today's economy is, is, is the media. Tell me about it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's an accident. I think it, that's, that's uh, noteworthy. But anyway... Now, here's the thing. Pray. And let's you and I pray right now. And I'm going to let you go. I believe that uh, God is vitally involved where we let him be. He will not override you or me. But God has a will. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now. We realize that these are the last days. These are perilous times, as your word says. And these are times, Lord, where your people need to be circumspect and where we need to be understanding and discerning. Lord, everything that is before us, we need to discern it. Everything that is around us, may the spirit of discerning be upon us. And may we discern the spirits of this age. And Father, I pray that you would enable us and help us to move beyond our own intellect. And move beyond our own experience. And move beyond our own likes and dislikes. And move beyond our own ideas and philosophies yes. and move into what Jesus moved into in the garden. Not my will, but thy will be done. Father, I pray that you would indeed bless America. God bless America. And Lord, I pray that you would not allow this country to be unblessed. Amen. 
That's right. or to be in any way put away from you, sir, yes. but that we would be close to you, yes. and that everything that transpires yes. would be of God. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to live in this day and time. We know this is our leg of this relay race. And Lord, we do not take lightly the times in which we live. And we ask you to give us wisdom and understanding. Give us discerning and help us to do exactly what we're supposed to do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Now, me and Diane love the hound out of you. Oh. You heard uh, uh, Found today's uh, activities insightful. And uh, I have these uh, sample ballot forms. If you'd like to look through them and see what the ballot looks like, if you haven't already voted. And. Uh, when you go from here, be led of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.